good swing there to start the day from McElroy down the left side of the fairway. Once again, trying to get this up in the air. The wind's going to help it working down off the left. Great eagle chance. This is the best angle if you're going to go for it. Beautiful shot from McElroy. Isn't it terrific to see them playing these different shots already? Justin Thomas, little fade with those shots. Great chance for Eagle. What a start this would be. Okay. Pure fescue greens, as you would expect on a length course. Birdie as well for McElroy. Good start. That would be absolutely perfect. Downwind once again. Man, that rhythm, the flow of that swing. It's just a delight, isn't it? And this was his Jonah, the sort of shot until about eight months ago and he, he used to spin the ball way too much went to a, a less spinny ball man it can be confusing yeah it's absolutely amazing i mean i started at gallant this was an awkward part to read overall in this section it looks left to right but actually i can see it moving the other way so straightens up in the end that was a tough one to read it's amazing my first game was at gallant in a pre-qualifying for the open my first game on a links course I was horrified. It was blowing a gale, the wind was coming in sideways, my wife Karen was getting free on the one hole I couldn't find her. If that thing's working, I mean, watch out. This was on 12, the first par three of his round. Using the contours. It makes it look so natural. Looks natural, doesn't it? He's been doing a lot of work with Brad Faxon. Looks good. Yeah. Putting like Brad Faxon. <laughs> Nobody puts like Brad Faxon. <laughs> he was I mean, he was one of the bosses of the moss, wasn't he? Looking to follow up what his playing partners have done. And also aiming it well to the right. Oh, that was straight over the flag. A little bit long, but all three players with good looks at birdies here at 13. Hello. Uh, Hello. Uh, I would say he's going pretty well. <laughs> you see how beautiful and low he's keeping that putter to the ground through impact as well. Fantastic, yeah. Exactly right. That's the way to go. If you're into a two club wind, take an extra club and hit it softly. Breaking off his right initially, and it will straighten up. If anything, go the other way. Yeah, it's not in, but pretty good lag from down there for McElroy. For the par for McElroy. Well done. Being <laughs> it high and letting it fly, Rory McElroy. stuff down there oh my well even the best in the world aren't immune to the fact that he's teed it up high he's tried to smash it he's gotten a little bit behind it to get it stopping quick enough you just don't want this carrying miles <laughs> it's right about where he landed it isn't it but just trickling towards the back of the green May have needed to land that somewhere around the front. With you, how about the sun shining earlier today? Certainly for Rory McIlroy with the putter working like this, Frank. Yeah, it's playing pretty much straight into the breeze. Got to be watchful for those two fairway bunkers down the left. It's quite an intimidating tee shot from the very back tee there. And this is actually one of the holes that 
the tour has spoken about moving the tee up a little bit, should it? Three wood carries 290 yards into the breeze, and this holds 282 for the second shot. So Makara was actually trying to do the opposite and carry it all the way and get it to stop a bit quicker. Doesn't like it though. Yeah, like wait, wait, wait. any golfer, you try and hit it extra hard, so easy to just lose the rhythm, lose the timing. Rory McIlroy is 42 yards. Got to carry the front portion. Take it out of play. Oh, oh. wow. Touch of class. Beautifully done. And he, he reads these putts a lot quicker now. He's, he's uncomplicated the game. You see, 18 months ago, I would have been worried over that putt. I would have thought, well, you know, where's he going to hit it? You know? 189 yards to go with this front pin location on the right hand side breeze off the right as well I think it's going to be quite tough to hold this one McElroy to stay in the lead at five under par. See that? Shoffley's puck moved to the right. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you would expect him to hit the hole from that range. For sure. Know, you know, but judging by his reaction, it's a misread. Looking to favour the right half, and that will be absolutely mint. Oh, boy. Well, that's the second driver in the last four holes he's hit where he's let go of the club, and oh. he certainly did favour the right side, but not further right than he would have anticipated. I'm seeing this as a bump and run, but you've got a big false front to contend with. Wow, what a shot. We couldn't quite see where the ball finished there, but it looked like it was beautifully played. Nice and firm. Nice. Very good up and down because that was a tricky chip as Incy described. And a great opening nine holes too. Four under par out in 31 on the back side. He's trying to bomb this one down. Oh, two of his last three tee shots, Incy's stuck behind him. Really not synced it up, but that one looked beautiful. Oh boy. Oh. Right hand bunker, what right hand bunker? Down to earth guy. Just backed off there, I don't know, maybe a little little bug or just a just trying to gather his thoughts. Rory McElroy's well. wedge play. Mm. I know this is the third time I've mentioned it today, but his wedge play is improving out of sight with this exit left move on the follow through. Take the upright lead. Well, he's been deadly from 30 feet today, but it's the second six-footer he's missed in the last three holes. Fooled him. Didn't think it was going right. I think the second and the 18th are the two hardest holes out on the golf course. The second today plays long, 493 yards straight into the breeze and that ball just nudging down into the rough on the right-hand side, making that approach shot almost impossible. Can you get the club into the back of the ball reasonably cleanly? That's key. You would be a little bit worried about a flyer, I think. You know when it comes out like a little, too little sand, but it is going to fizz like crazy. Very little break in this for McElroy. So he's going to go back to three under.
got to carry it at least 320 on that line and he's more than capable of doing that oh my goodness oh well that's just something that the <laughs> the majority of pros won't even see today aiming it a little bit right 221 this is no more than a six iron Just straight down the throat of the flag, wasn't it? We are going to see at least one eagle. Blower, Terry, but the putter seemed to be uh, quite well. On the green, off the green, doesn't matter. This for eagle at the third to jump to five. Yeah, that'll work just in the first cut of rough, but ideal for Rory McIlroy. There's a swell at the front, and you want to avoid that. Sit. Oh, oh. boy, oh boy. Look, it's a bump and run, this one on the uphill slope. Carried it further than I thought, and I think he anticipated as well. And he's been joined at five under par by Ewan Ferguson and Ben Arndt, so this is to remain in a share of the lead. Yes, well done for Rory McIlroy. Motive, McIlroy. It's going to be a tough ass to hit this green, but he can definitely get close. Just went after it and got under it a little bit and hooked it left. trying to get that ball first contact and get this bump and running a bit more stabby action and a great oh. result too Boy, didn't he get some spin out of that play I don't know did it. is to take the outright lead at six under par yeah beautifully done Rory McElroy six under par you can't miss this anywhere Trouble surrounds this green. Oh, beauty. It's 124 yards, and it's the fifth hardest hole on the course today. It's averaging 3.14. Rory McIlroy tomorrow. He's a crowd puller. He moves the needle, and... Hmm. Didn't really scare it. Expected some left to right in it. It wasn't much. Launch angle 18 degrees. That is just ridiculous. Wow. There's a lone little bunker down the left, which I thought might be troublesome for him. Yeah, well played for Rory McElroy. Really, really well played. Now, McElroy, 11 feet. Can he again? Oh. As good a roll as that was, it's another one on the low side. It's definitely a theme, isn't it, today? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. shot but he won't like that one bit pins pretty much the heart of the green plenty of undulation here boy that would have looked brilliant to him it's still a good result not an easy shot it was a proper wind shot as well wasn't it cryptic club down restricted follow through That was about four on the stip meter, that one. Main tied for the lead. Ooh. 
That will be a very popular spot today, Tony. It certainly will. And if you're going to miss it, <laughs> definitely miss it there. That More so right towards the end. It will move. Whoa. Whoa. You know, a pricey of all the best shots during the day, and you think, oh, this game's easy. It's not. Well done. McElroy. Potter has been excellent today. Great to see. Brilliant round from Rory McElroy. Tied for the lead, six under par. Some of the highlights from the round today look a little different earlier. McElroy with the approach here. Huge tee shot down there, just flips a wedge in. And after a shot like that, today. He's been putting so well for the last month and a half, Jay. But so still for this place. Yeah, the rough didn't look to be too thick over there. The ball actually bound a little bit. Strength and speed on display. And Rory in position for second straight birdie to begin the round. Just a little bit too much pace for the line he chose, but he hit a good putt. You can see he was holding the finish. Let me make four at number two, especially when you drive it in the left rough. Good score. Take on that fairway bunker that you spoke about. Well, McElroy aiming left. Just has the perfect shape. McElroy drives the ball well, like he just has. Look out field. Two eighty nine all the way back to the hole. That's the right side to miss it on. It's left, but it's the correct side, I should say. Putter from off the green at the third, the par five. Eagle attempt. Gets eight under quickly. One off the lead, Terrell Hatton and Tom Kim. Way from the trees on the right. This takes all the bunkers out of play, won't reach the far one up the right. Well, I was going to say there's just a stock lob wedge here. This should be dancing with the flag when it lands. Will slip back to flag high. Right to left and then add the hole back to the right. Mm. With a whisker, three out of the opening four. That was another good putt from McElroy. It just didn't go in. So getting back to Carson Solheim, he was the original mad genius of golf. He didn't want the ball to go along the ground. He wanted the ball to go up. You know, speaking from about 10 feet, you want to go the ball to go up in the air for about four or five inches. <laughs> Asking for it to cut. Flies it over that bunker he was concerned about. Just a little three-quarter driver there, Ned. That was a great angle there, wasn't it? You can see once it lost its speed, Jay, how quickly it wandered off to the right. This little bundle of joy will break left to right. Oh. Boy, maybe a little too much pace to take the break, but hit it right where he wanted to. I mean, easily, easily. Could have been four under through five today. That's the thing, Rory hits it so well. He has more opportunities to miss.
number 16 player in the world. This afternoon, we're watching Rory McIlroy. This, the par three sixth and his tee shot, eight under at this point. I mean, just a beautiful start today after that opening round. No problem there. Three of the opening six for Rory. And he's got a share of the lead at nine under. Headed well right. Now can you take advantage of the break? It's going to need one big bounce. It came off a little slow, but a good leave after an errant tee shot. That one started a little higher and had a little more pace behind it. Oh, a little bit more than he wanted coming back there, but that's the number he needed. That's a four after the terrific break after a poor tee shot. Seems to be on a nice one. Blood bunkers. Puts it in the crosswalk. They put those crosswalks where no player is going to reach. Oh, not that time. And right on line. Played it straight, started it straight, and it wandered off to the right, and just frustration starting to build in the body language of McElroy. Not often you'll see a player's reaction that suggests that he's a little disappointed from being three under through eight. So McElroy, he'll throw this one straight up into the sky. Looks promising. Similar pitch point to Shoffley, but playing right along with what Ned said there. 224 yards today. Three under on his round today, Frank, and he could easily be six or seven under. He's already missed four putts inside of 10 feet for birdie. Well, that's hard to believe, isn't it? Although there are a couple of bunkers down the left here that are just about in range. It's, you can see the flag there on the right. A bit of hurt right to left. Yesterday it was down off the left. Made a birdie here yesterday. And the average of the field, 332 yesterday, 333. And today, 308. McElroy, the third to go here at the 10th. Taking a rip at this driving iron here, Tom. Just left. Doesn't want to miss the green left. It falls away there. It's real tight. No, it's going to drift down, I think. Yep. It is, and I think he's going to try to bump it into the hill. It should take an immediate left kick as soon as it hits. Yeah, well, give himself a chance at the birdie. But for him, he said it publicly, 20% of what we talk about is about the stroke. Everything else is um, this kind of stuff. Missing out on a chance to tie the lead there. You know, that was a putt it looks like fooled him and how much it had to break. I, I thought that was a really difficult shot from down below to get it there. And it's funny, you know, we talk about stuff, Frank, like, you know, putting for par versus birdie, too. And, and a lot of players make those par putts so much easier. And, and six out of eight fairways so far for Rory. And I don't know if you count a fairway hit when you drive the green like you did on five. Oh, come on. Can't hit wedges that close to each other. Likes it. He won the driving contest here by eight yards over Thomas. Oh, that can come back. It 
Let's go. How about those three shots? It's funny, he's missed all of these today for birdie, but it seem, seemingly made them all for par. Two feet, nine inches. That had some pace on it, too. Fighting a six iron on a pretty good line, asking for it to sit. Yeah, he has hit some good shots today. And again, it's going to come down to a putt, 10 Ooh. feet or so. Terry, I know that one misses, but T to green, Rory has already gained five shots on the field T to green in just 12 holes. So despite the body language right now, how it is and the misses on the green. Moving it round in line with the fairway. Yeah, that's going to be pretty nice there, these holes. Part of the renovation. Yeah, that's going to be fine. So McElroy will have a chance for a birdie to get it to 11 under par here in the second round of the Scottish Open. Got to convert this to tie the lead. I think they're just misreads to me. Looking at Brad Faxon looks decidedly nervous. <laughs> Don't call on me. <laughs> Definitely a little shorter backswing for Rory. Yep, uses the contour well. He'll have to putt first, and so Xander the line, but a good shot and a good lead, putting back up the hill. Three feet of fringe or so to go through. Good pace. Figure this game out. Huh? There's a bunker down the left, Smalley. That's a good line. You can just see the top of it. Well, this one's heading left of that, heading what? towards the fescue. Anxious, that reaction. A jump, but a jump out to the right. Maybe a little water ball. Short at the bunker, though. Expect a little more, but okay. There you go. He's listening to you, Smalley. Man, he got all of this one. This is just blistered up the middle of the fairway. Uh, softer conditions, not a lot of run, but that one in prime position. Yeah, this is going to be way up in the air. Maybe leaking it just right. All away. There's no bunker over there. In 2011, Luke Donald was the winner. Just trying to get that one to release, but you could see the idea and the execution there from McElroy. And that was not his best. Well, it hasn't all been plain sailing for McElroy, but he's still leading by one. Like asking to go. Oh boy. Well, now he's got a tough choice there whether you're going to bump and run that, keep it along the ground. And it's this man, McElroy, who has the lead. Yeah, with his putter. Got to smack this thing. Yeah, difficult to judge, too. I don't think you could have chipped that, could you? No, nah, the lie was terrible. And that one again. 
again, that one looked like a little chatter on the green early. Bumpy. Slow for sure. Watching it closely too, yeah. Ouch. I don't know what that was, guys. Just straight right. The, the contours would nearly run it around to the flag. Instead, just showed his talent, really. Airborne got it to sit down. Good chance to get away with four. And, and it's the way it's been all day, left with one of those. With authority on that last one. Motored it in. Blistered up the middle of the fairway. I think that works. Frankie has been doing that for now two straight days plus one tee shot. Yeah, that's going to get your grill. Brad had this huge smile on his face when he saw this shot. I helped him with his one footers for birdie. This morning. <laughs> <laughs> what a way to open up. Stay out of everybody's line. Birdie start for McElroy. Yeah, this is starting at that bunker. Crushed. Trying to move. Yep, you see that launch angle at 14. That's about his normal launch angle. One of the highest drivers on the tour, highest peak height. Get a little help from the left side here if, if you're brave enough. Yeah, it started just right, and the wind's got it towards the middle of the green. Yeah, probably didn't catch that salt, or maybe not committed enough on that line. You know, when players talk about touch and feel for putting, and it includes uphill putts too, doesn't it? Engaging the speed. That's nice. Frank, don't you think, you know, a lot of players talk, oh, he's got great touch on these fast sliding putts. But you have to have it on these slow uphill putts, too. Well, you get uphill into the breeze, uphill down breeze, uphill cross breeze. So that you always get that sort of never two putts in a row that feel or look the same. Yeah, and that's, you know, when we talk about adjustments, alterations, whatever the word you want to use, modifications, players are doing it constantly throughout the round, throughout the year. Should be a bit of breeze out of the right. Oh, he started this in the middle of the trees, and it's coming back. Trying to, at least. And it did. That's just an aggressive line, Smiley, but wow, what a shot. Yeah, I didn't see that line, Tom. Quiet, <laughs> yeah. please. Contact was nice, starting at the hole, moving towards the left center of the green. It's going to stay on the green. There's a little bit of a ridge there, and it's going to stay above that ridge. So a long eagle putt to come. You can give this one a whirl. It is so slow. Yeah, it's really good in terms of distance control from that far away. Looking to change that, same as today. Yeah, and low stress for McElroy, those uh, first two tap-in par putts. 151st open at Royal Liverpool, NBC USA, and Peacock. McElroy won it in 2014 there. Three woods, Smiley. Well out to the right, heading towards those trees. Mm. Actually, probably didn't need three wood there. Well, fortunate with the lie, and he's going to be fortunate where this finishes up. Yeah. 
first sort of quickish putt he's had. Thank you. Frank, it looked like I was going to stop about three times. Man, he went after that, Brad, and this oh. is a beauty. He has some recoil in a swing like that. Let's see what kind of bounce it gets. Get online. Yeah. Oh, that's a perfect line there. <laughs> Look at Brian <laughs> Harmon going, well, mine was 60 yards short of that, and I hit it pretty good. And then he gets his flight from once he finds that spot. Just clips the ball so nicely too. It's just so shallow of an approach. Facts. So he gets the the spot before the flight. And and I think a lot of players might have played that with a wedge along, get it on the green quickly. Had some speed there. It just feels like a waste, isn't it? Such a great drive. Walk away with full. I know. I think we're so spoiled watching him and his greatness, and and you kind of go, oh man, shouldn't you shoot 60 every time you play? <laughs> and it's just not that easy. A disappointing par for Rory. Again, yesterday, three putt at this green for par. Got that breeze, which very much comes into play with the short iron. Asking that one to sit down as it does drift away towards the back of this green. McElroy will have a chance to get it to 13 under par. Now, McElroy for birdie at six. Okay. Woo. Woo. It looks straight down the middle. Will it carry the bunker? Easily. Magnificent again from McElroy. Is no foot flat. This is how he got there at the seventh. As Dottie said, massive tee shot, 353 oh. yards. Oh. All attack mode from there. Well, that's two times now. He's thrown it in there tight for birdies. The first and seventh. It's actually 300 for the round through seven holes. Wisely choosing Trev to go uh, short of those bunkers with an iron here. That's right, just 285 to those pot bunkers down the right hand side. Still need to be up the left side with that big kick to the right. Oh, that feeds in nicely, Dottie. That's Link's golf right there. It's nearly perfect. Setting up for the fade. Breeze just picked up. Oh. Don't miss for right. And short in one of those bunkers. He knew it as soon as he hit it. With the green speeds being a, a little slower and a little softer, I think it's manageable and sure enough. How's all that club hit speed to get that ball to pop up? Well done. He, he could have shot 50 something yesterday if he'd putted like that. At the ninth, McElroy. He had six iron in his hands. Excuse me, five. Switched to six. Push the ball position back just a little, trying to turn it from right to left. What touch of wind is up there wouldn't let that turn over. Not a bad strike, though. Get it there. So many from that side we've seen come up short today. Now Rory for par. Breeze helping from the right. <clears throat> that is pretty right there, Frank, hitting that little fade, holding it up against the right to left wind. He's had some great drives so far today, Trevor, too, and that round yesterday was magical. If only for a hot putter yesterday, that would have been low. 
Try and control that bounce. Not many he doesn't launch up there where it causes rain. Oh, look at that. 367 yards off the tee. And a five iron inside 10 feet. McElroy has a chance for another eagle. Hit a bunch of good putts. They just didn't make a lot. Like yesterday, the common miss was left. Yeah, you're right. It looked like it was sort of under hit parts yesterday. That's what it seemed like to me on that. Looked just a little tentative, like there wasn't enough authority in that stroke. But still a four. Wind has picked up, though, and definitely helping. Darker skies. Number one in driving uh, this week. Don't hit it. 315 hit it. yards. Tree down the right side, I believe, is what he was talking about. But if he gets past that tree, which he has, oh my, oh my goodness, that's just a pitch to this green. Spin back down that slope. Come on, get over that. No. Oh, it didn't need much more spin than that. A little unfortunate for Rory. The old green was much better. Well, he had to show some respect there going down the slope. Maybe the wind just kept that out. Remains two in front with time a little tap in left. We need to avoid the swale to the right of the hole location today. Lucky it got a softish bounce there. Right, Amanda, he's doing a lot of things well these days, and of course, runner up at RBC Canadian Open on that historic day won by Nick Taylor. Here's Rory at the 12th. It just lacks a, a little conviction, especially for a guy whose confidence is running so high. Oh, that thing just stayed on the right edge. First bogey of the day. He liked the putt that he hit, but once again gesturing like he's not getting the read down. First bogey of the day for Rory. <laughs> that was not quite the normal effort there. That's because he's in two minds. He wanted to actually go for it. I think you're right. <laughs> You'd love to ask him that now, wouldn't you? He'd say, I should have hit the driver. As we mentioned, the wind pushing it left. Green receptive enough to throw it nearly all the way back to the hole. Right toward those stairs. It'll kick left from there. That's right. Set. Set. Well, we heard that back at 12. It was also left. Does stay up. It's just a gorgeous sight out there. Good effort. Yeah, it brought in more views, didn't it, Jim? You can see Fedra Island, the lighthouse. That's the thing about that choice of iron off the tee. You stand on that tee at 13. Big gust of wind pushed Rory off the ball. Is this another pull? Yeah, is it left again? Oh, got a good kick, Trevor. Definitely something going on here. Since He's made the turn onto the second nine, but getting away with it at the par three. Let's take advantage of the left bank there. <laughs> Thank you for dating me. Lucky you can remember them. <laughs> yeah. Come on, Rory. Oh, yeah, that's a bonus. That is a bonus. Still playing all that prom music, Donnie. <laughs> I didn't go to the prom, Jim. I went and played in the Corning Classic. Oh, come on. True story. Look at this. Even the swings he's not so sure about are finding the fairway. Think back to 11 as well. Ooh. 
not good at all. We do love this play, putting it down over a very uniform uh, surface into a bathtub. Settle. Making it stressful when it shouldn't be after that tee shot. No, McElroy. Wow, you never would have guessed five standing back there in a fairway. Second straight day of uh, what if round. Going to be pretty irritated by these silly mistakes. Good news is he's got a par five coming up. Touch and go down the right. Wow. Extra bounce. It Oof. is thick. Got to be careful it doesn't wrap yep. around the shaft then. Because if it does, it'll send it left. That is very well managed. All those hours in the gym have paid off. Played the par five, seven under so far this week. That'll be magnified at the the uh, shot's apex for sure. Doesn't like the strike. <laughs> Easier it is for him to drop into a good rhythm and get the sequence really dialed in. From there, it becomes much easier for him to hit the occasional fade rather than hit too many draws. And then what happens is he's, uh, excuse me, too many fades early, and then he struggles to find that natural draw. How much? Well, I had to work hard for the five. Par fives normally mincemeat for McElroy. Again, trying to hold it off with that abbreviated follow through, and he misses that ridge we talked about just 14 yards right. Oh, great angle here to see how much this ball will break right to left as it picks up speed across that little ridge. Wanted to get on the ground quickly, and he did, Ian. Beautifully played. That's a winner. Wasn't that great how he just hooded that club face a little bit going back, used the leading edge to pinch it. That's Tom. He's Tom's 21, Scotty Scheffler 27. And Rory with the very good up and down. He heads down to Hoy Lake next week as the winner there eight years ago. Longest driving average of the week. This is high, starts center. What happens from there? Ended up okay, but did not love the swing at all. Let the release go here. 161 should get it to the top, Trevor. Hung it out to the right. Boy, there's a pattern, isn't there? Uh, sure is. When he starts to hit too many fades, that's what starts to happen. Just hard to get it back. Pretty good. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow will seek his first win on European soil since taking the Irish Open 2016. There's the part. The 36-hole leader is now our 54-hole leader. Yeah, tree trouble, it's a touch left. I'm looking to get past the tree, it's almost right behind it. And just run one through. Just relying on a few bounces. Didn't have to do too much manufacturing, but might need to do a bit of homework with the next putt to come. It's quite a downslope to the hole for McElroy. If it gets the chance to get there. Out there and playing, and Rory McElroy had over 13 feet just to save par at the first. Downwind just kept rolling. So critical save from McElroy. But these are tough tee shots. We're right! He's going to have to really hold on hard through the shot here, which then brings the balloon into play. So there's a couple of issues in this. Be 
Exactly what Anthony said. Just hung up in the air. Came up short. Nah, and that's quite. not going to stop. It's going to come all the way back. Talk about the wind. Slopey greens too. Add that into the mix. Ended up with a, his sixth bogey of the week. So McElroy. Bogey back to 12. Oh. It's a bogey back to 12. Tied at the top. Three players, two players, one behind. Par five next, though. We're McElroy. He's aiming over the middle of them. <laughs> go. Uh, go. Go, 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 go. Thinks he hasn't caught all of it. Oh, it's fine. Barely finds the left side of the fairway. Oh, it doesn't. That is uh, an aggressive line from McElroy. Ram leading the way right now. I'm back out to the third. McElroy, second to the par five. Seven iron on the way, right at it. Longest drive of the week at this hole, and a seven iron on a hole that's over 600 yards. And just needs to put on the brakes, but he's on the correct side there, knocking it back into the wind. Certainly giving it a wrap into the breeze. Okay, we'll have that one for a birdie. Tom Kim. Also has a chance for birdie. Okay. Nicely done. It's widen head and left. Air short rather than long. Oh, excellent. McElroy, live look here for birdie. Up and over putt, moving left to right. It's going to be tough to make these type of putts today. Different expectations, too. On a day like today, patience. I know it, you can almost tired of hearing that word, but it's five wood out this week to put this club in. This is his two iron, his driving iron. This is to stay short of that wall, and he hit so many driving two irons on the practice range this morning. And there it is. Look how low that was. Yeah. Interesting to see how far that went into the wind, Frank. Eight iron from 120. You see how far down on the grip he is here. It'd be a short follow through. Just a chippy shot right there. The wind's trying to hit it. Kept it too low, too solid. I can't believe he hit an eight iron from that far. He needed nine, Brad. No, maybe. <laughs> Some 67 feet. It's hard to call this a birdie, but it's more of a third shot. Back up the hill now. It's got to go. Oh, that's flying. That might go down off the green. Boy, just a really difficult putt. Some 67 feet. It's hard to call this a birdie. Putt's more of a third shot. Back up the hill now. It's got to go. Oh, that's flying. That might go down off the green. Boy, just a really difficult putt. Going to be 400 yards. Let's get a run for a while. Yeah. For Par McElroy from nearly 20 feet. Right at it. And you kind of think it was the second shot, really, that caused that. The flight at eight iron misjudged the distance. And now a five for Rory. Wind really gets in this one. 
Be Let's lucky go. to catch the green. Oh no, watch out. And the groans in the gallery because they know how difficult those bunkers can be. Oh, I was hoping that would just kick on a little bit. Still a chance to save par. Yeah, good. It's 177th in the PGA Tour and fourth round putting average. That's where he started it, Frank. Man, I think it's still think running. I... Stay away. Coming closer, yeah, wind dated pretty well judged. Oh, some three perfectly judged. That, that drama at the end, will it? Will it? Will, yes. Much stronger than what it is right now. Yeah. McElroy with that driving iron, Frank. Got to avoid the bunkers on the right. That looks left. Oh. Got to stay left. Now you just hope for the right bounce. Well, that's how a did pretty that stop. I don't know how it stops. And, and actually, for a miss, not bad. But it is slow. Be happy to judge this one. Let me tell you, this will be a great fall. Just stroke the ball beautifully now. No, no, we just hung it out to the left, so it's a four way tie at the top. McElroy, Hatton. The Scotsman McIntyre. You don't want this getting more than 30 feet in the air. Let's go, Murray! Set. Set. Rory. Turn to left. Oh, goodness me, Rory. No shout either. Not good. Jim Nance, Trevor Immelman, and the crew on hand on site here on the East Lothian coast. And even though in preparation for this. Needs a big pass save here. Three bogeys, two birdies so far, and now another mistake at nine. That'll put Hatton two ahead of him. And go big. He's only hit one fairway so far today. That must improve, and it's not going to help there. That's one of the worst swings I've seen Rory McIlroy make all season. Yeah, that was closer to the seventh fairway. Stuck way underneath, club face wide open. That's from 202. Another one that stays on the right side. How far do you throw it? How much the ground do you use? He's gone the other way, straight up in the air. Fantastic. He was using the insurance of the mound on the other side of the green that he knew that he could use as a break. You absolutely need to be reading the wind on the putting today. He's made a couple of good mid-range putts so far to keep himself in contention. Back at the tee, Rory, from Fleetwood to uh, Mac. <laughs> Underneath again. Uh, all right. Two driver swings in a row. And yes, left is more the play. Ian, that's not one ounce left. All right, he's... 
hit it straight into the bank, brought it in with a little draw and a tap in left for the three. To right the ship. Birdie for McElroy. One behind Robert McIntyre now. We're back at the 12th and this is the first leg of what's known here as Ronan's Cove. So that stretch of the golf course where you're going to hit some short irons, that's a nine and not a good one. They flew it right past the hole and stopped suddenly. You rush your stroke, you lose the natural tempo to your stroke. Oh, oh wow. wow. I don't think he believed it was going to ever drop. No, he was on the walk and somehow that found the bottom. With all the power that McElroy has, he could comfortably reach this old Dotty, but an iron off the tee. It's a big risk. So second straight day he's elected to lay up. That shows me that he's not feeling comfortable with his swing right now. It's almost a bailout, isn't it? Admittedly out of bounds down the left, but easily get home there off the tee. Now across to 13 after laying up. McElroy, his second. It's 129 full, but only 118 front. It's just humming down there. Yeah, off a very abrupt lie. Just almost impossible to get close if you lay up off the tee, Frank. Yeah, that's the problem. We're talking about advising against the layup today. Seagulls would get there twice as quick. <laughs> Seagull flies at 28 miles an hour. Can perhaps pop one in here. About a three foot elevation change from Rory to where the hole is. What an effort. Go, uh, go, go. Oh, it did. As a birdie putt, he was probably thinking, no, don't hit into that bunker. And in these exposed greens, you have to allow for that breeze. Hopped on him. He's made it! Two days in a row for McElroy at the 14th. The wind held it up all the way up there across the ridge and then just died in with that wind assist. Find it, you've got nothing in. Love that pose. Yeah. Uh oh. Why not love the result? Being waved all right, but we'll just see how that is defined. Lies quite good, just 107 to the front, down fan. Yeah, a decent angle too. He's going to have some green that he can work with to skip it back there, just like this. Took what the shot gave him, Trevor. Yep. Backoffs from the wind continue putting in the same direction he did at the 14th. This is McElroy. I say it's not a par five. It's not playing like your normal par five today as he tees off at 16, Frank. Only one player. Victor Perez from France has reached his par five and two. That's more like Rory's ball flight, Frank. Oh, too, he's going to be stretched to perhaps try and reach this par five and two. That is lower than low and going left. David Fulwelly. Going to be pulled up by that rough. That'll be awkward too coming from the left side. Feel through the roof with joy and excitement. We're at 16. Rory can change the narrative. Yeah, that was from a quite decent lie, Frank, and a good job. to say advantage McIntyre after that. McElroy's got two tough holes coming up. 17 and 18 now. He just did, but all the other ones did there. It just doesn't turn as much as you think.
has not played this hole well this week. Can he get that right today? This should feed hard left. This is Here it comes. Be great. Here it comes. McElroy inside six feet at the 71st hole here of the Genesis Scottish Open. And McElroy a birdie of his own here at the 71st hole. This hole owed him one. He bogeyed it twice Thursday, Friday. That's the shape you were looking for. And it's going to be good now. That is a bullet. Oh, look at this. Sensational. Almost right out of McIntyre's playbook. in Scotland. I wasn't so sure with his reaction. I don't think he thought it was going in. Kind of reminded me like the putt back on 12, the part three, where he gave up on it early and it found a way in. What a finish. Birdie, birdie for McElroy. We'll come back to talk to him shortly. Career win number 24, a memorable one. Yeah, that reaction. There's no way he thought all the way that it was in, but it was. He birdies 17 and 18. Thanks for watching the PGA Tour on YouTube. Watch another video right here.